Hello, it's me, and as you may know, the only thing I like better than cruising and visiting strange and exotic ports is puzzles. Yes, puzzles and tropical paradises are two of my favorite things in the world. So I actually brought two puzzles along with me, both of which are from Raphael uh, Mufflin. Uh, this one is the uh, Ripple Cube, and this one is the Crystal Light. So I figured I would bring these, uh, as I didn't know how much time I was going to have to actually do cubing, so I figured I'd bring some things that might be a little bit more uh, straightforward in terms of the solve. Uh, unfortunately, I see that a sticker did not make it in the journey, so I'm going to see if I can get another set of stickers so that I can put, um, so I can fix this. But until then, I have no way of doing that. So looking at these two puzzles, um, I've actually yet to do much of a scramble with them, but I have a suspicion of how they're gonna how they're gonna function. So this looks like a Rex cube, except we have this split edge over here. And the question is, how much more in terms of the solve or a challenge is that really gonna is that really gonna cause? Well, I think that for the most part, the reduction of these is gonna be fairly straightforward with a down, down, up, up. So you can say I can move these around pretty independently, maybe reduce the edges that way and just solve it like I would a Rex cube. A Rex cube, in turn, is really a cubic transformation of a of a face-turning octahedron. So what then is this? Well, looking at how it moves, we move on the surface over here, we move on the surface over here as well. So uh, this is a very strange and interesting variation, which I think is maybe a variation of this puzzle as I'm looking at it, because the movement is not too dissimilar. Because if we're looking at these as sides, sides over here, and I'm looking at these as kind of a corners, corner turns, then looking at what a corner turner really is, is this might also be a variation of a face turning octahedron. So I'm thinking maybe what I'll do is rather than do two separate solves, is I think this may be more complex version of this guy over here. Now in terms of where this fits in, this would be uh, the face turning octahedral part, but I wouldn't call this a master face turning octahedron because I've got this over here. This is more what you'd call like a cross cube, a face turning octahedral cross cube, or a baby face as it, as it were, where you've got an extra turn right within the face of a face turning octahedron, but it's not an extra layer. So, um, uh, so with that said, I think it just might be a matter of maybe kind of reducing these edges down and solving it not like a master face turning octahedron. We actually saw a puzzle that was much like that, but a, a cross, a face turning octahedral cross cube. So when I look at this guy over here, if I look at this as maybe a move like this, and I look at a move like this, because you can go like up, sorry, airplane overhead, up, down, down. That looks a lot like up, up, down, down. So really what I think I'm looking at is I think this whole elongated piece is just like this, this Rex part, which in essence is the corner of a face turning octahedron. So in essence, these are corners, but look how many more pieces there are. So we can say these two are equivalent to each other. This is equivalent to the corner over here, but you've got these two extra pieces over here and we have to figure out what that's all about. My thinking is that this, along with this, is this whole piece over here. So this is an extra, what you call like a Rex cube plus. Uh, plus is where you just add other pieces to enhance the, um, the challenge. But I think all these together make up this piece over here. Then you've got this and then all these pieces over here. So um, let's kind of keep in that position. But if I do this move over here, that will be equivalent to this move. And the basic difference is that this has a hidden center. You can see there's a screw way down inside. This actually has a center here. Um, so this the center. So what looks like corners are really the center of the face turning octahedron. So, so we've got a center over here. The rest of these kind of correlate. So in other words, these pieces over here are correlative with these pieces here. Well, these represent the edges. But like this, they're split edges. So in other words, if this is the edge here, then this represents this piece over here. These two are equivalent, this is equivalent. And if I move this back here, then it lines up with this. So basically, I think we uh, this the only difference between this baby face turn, so to speak, this cross cube turn, is the fact that, uh, well, there isn't any difference. So, so these pieces are correlative. As I spread this out over here, 
Um, we see that we've got, some, we've got some extra pieces as well. Um, this is attached over here, so this is correlative with, with this. This is correlative with this. Um, or rather, this is correlative with this. We've got an extra piece right over here. So this piece right here, there's no piece that's correlated with this, so we've got extra pieces. So I would say this is the same as this puzzle, with the addition of a center over here, an extra piece over here, which are these guys, and then you seem to have a piece that fits right in the middle here, which is this guy over here. So this solve experience is the same as this, just with more pieces. Up, up, down, down, which in turn, these are all variations of face turning octahedrons. Up, up, down, down. So the thinking is that, okay, if I know how to solve this, I can probably solve this, except I need to make sure that I can reduce these pieces over here. So what I'll do is, uh, let's, let's see if we can't design some commutators that can help us out with that. So if I do, say, R, U, R, I, UI, I see I isolate this piece here, so I'm free to use this as a middle move. U, R, U, I, R, I. Now the thing is, I, I already have a commutator to move these around, so I don't need another commutator. But I'm wondering if maybe I can move this piece around instead of this. So the move that I'm used to is if I were to go like this to here, this to here, well, this to here, this to here, and this to here. This is purely right from the face turning octahedron. So it's gonna be down, 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 up, and up, then down, up, up. And sure enough, this one to here, this one to here, this one to here. So that's something that I'm used to. What's the, um, what's the correlation with this over here? So, let's see, if this were, um, if these were the edges here, I would, I would say this will go to here, this will go to here, and this will go to here. Let's see if, if we can move these in a way that is, uh, uh, let's see, I gotta skew my perspective a little bit here. Okay, I think it's, I think it's this move here. Uh, no, maybe not, maybe not. Okay, I think it's this whole slice down here to get this to here. So I'm going to move this whole slice down like so. Then we're going to go down, down, up. Then move this slice back and go down, up, up. Okay, so you can see a very similar pattern of movement. I kind of wish I didn't use a different color scheme, but this whole thing, so that shows that this is correlative with these guys. This went to here, this went to here, and this went to here. The question is, how do I now separate these guys out? Well, I can separate this out by doing a middle move here, a middle move inside a middle move, and just get it back, so there's that. Let's go ahead and get them back and see if that other movement that I did might be able to correlate with that. So just to practice, down, 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 up, and up, down, up, up. Let's go ahead and move this just a little bit higher there. Okay. And then we do it again. Down, 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 up, and up, down, up, up. Okay. And just for the sake of keeping my perspective about me, let's do the same thing here. Down, 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 up, and up, down, up, up. The thing about Raphael's puzzles is the movement is really, really good, always good. So here to here, here to here, and here to here. So we've got down, 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 up, and up, down, up, up. Okay, now let's do that other algorithm to see if maybe a process of just reducing these will get these into line. So let's do that, holding this in front of me. R, U, R, I, U, I. Let's look around. I see that this is isolated over here. It's isolated here. So I can do a middle move like that. Okay, let's get this back. U, 
R U I R I. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. I'm going to make this my first move. We're going to move the middle move first. So we're going to go up, then R U R I U I, and then we move it back, and we do U R U I. All right, I do that because it makes something from clockwise to counterclockwise. So as you can see, we didn't move this whole thing, we just moved these guys. And what that did is it took this white one to here, this green one to here, this yellow one to here. So now I have a way of reducing these, so I'm not gonna worry about that. And just to make sure it's in muscle memory, I'm gonna take this, so if I hold this in front of me, it's gonna be this piece that's facing up, like a rocket, it's gonna to launch to its next place here, this is gonna launch around to here, and this is gonna find its way back here. So I'm gonna go up, just that middle por portion over there, and do R U R I U I, then peel it back, and do U R U I R I. So one more should launch this to here, this to here, and this to here. So we go up, R U R I U I, and then back U. R, U, I, all right, okay. So that's pretty good. I think I've got my perspective about me. In terms of what to do about these centers, well, they don't really scramble, so I think that they're just gonna be a point at which we're gonna, um, we're gonna put things in. Now, in terms of these pieces here, just like I did down, down, up, up, I should be able to do exactly the same thing here by going down, oops, down, up, so that isolates these guys here. It doesn't hit anything else. So now I know how to isolate. Now I know how to isolate these pieces here and these pieces here. Down, down, up, up. So I won't sweat those. In terms of everything else, it's going to be exactly like the solve over here. Those are the algorithms. We got to place the edges, make sure they correlate with the centers, put these in, and then we can put these guys in. I, I now know what I need to do to reduce these. The only question is the, are these pieces here? These I don't have an algorithm for. So let's see if we can make some correlations with these pieces. Now, it seems to be a little limited in terms of some of the scrambles. I, I can tease these out and I can isolate them just like that. So let's see how I can maybe design something. This piece, has a parity with this piece here. Now by parity, I mean it's got like a symmetry with these two pieces. I suspect, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that these two pieces never scramble with each other. These are like the same piece. Because I notice that if I move this, they move together. If I move, oh, I don't know, this, they move together. So I, can, I don't know that I can ever separate these out, which might make it easy to reduce this piece to these pieces here reduce these in. So it just might mean a couple of extra steps. So maybe what I'll do is since these pe these puzzles are so close to each other is do a dual scramble and then do a dual solve to see um, you know to see what comes of it. So why don't we just go ahead throw caution to the wind and just go ahead and scramble these. Every time I, I, I do this every time I scramble I always wonder will I ever really get it back? Or will I be in a situation where I bit off more than I can chew? And finally, I have met my match. And I won't be able to get it back. This one, I think, will add a little bit, but not too much worse in terms of the strategy. Okay, bring this out over here. So I'm doing baby face scramble. So this isn't really a hybrid puzzle. It's really just like a, a cross, a Rex cross cube, or a face-turning actahedral cross cube. In this case, what he called the ripple cube. Okay, how are we doing here? Pretty good? Pretty good. Okay, so that's nicely scrambled. Now let's go ahead and scramble this guy too. Uh, all right, let's throw caution to the wind. No time like the present. To anyone who's thinking of buying this puzzle, uh, go ahead and do it. It's, um, you can always rely on Raphael's fantastic work. You can always rely on a smooth turning puzzle. 
And let's see if some of our theories work here. I'm just trying to separate all these pieces to enhance the difficulty. I'm cutting no corners. And it's too late now. There is no turning back. Okay. Do some cross turns, but I think I've got a perspective on how this puzzle is put together. It's an interesting series, the Ripple series. I don't think you wanted to call this in the Ripple series because it doesn't have that same sort of wave-like fashion, wave-like. And, okay, are we good? Sure. Okay, looks like we've separated things out pretty well. Let's break this out here too. separate these. Okay. Uh, maybe there's a little bit better scrambling we can do here. A little bit better over here. Okay. Okay, I think we're good. So what we see are two very nice, very symmetric scrambled puzzles. There's something about a non-shape shifting which is kind of a relief. So. How shall we go about solving this? Well, I think the first step is doing a process of reduction. Uh, basically, I think I want to take it to a face-turning octahedron, or in this case, a Rex cube. And same thing with this. So what I would do, when starting off with something like this, is maybe just reduce these guys over here. Um, and the way that I would do that is I can start off with the greens. And let's put all these edges together. Let's reduce all the edges. So here's a green and a red. Let's find a green and a red here, the other green and red, which is right over here. So I'm going to move this into this plane over here so we're good. Let's get the middle piece over here also, which is right here. Go. Now there shouldn't be any parity with this, so it's fairly easy to place, and boom. Okay, so that edge is in. I'm not going to worry about these centers, which are not really centers, they're actually corners. But unlike the face-turning octahedron, where I normally put the corners in first, they just have one color, so I can't really coordinate the puzzle based on that. So this is in. Now let's do another green. Here's a green and orange. This is green and red over here. So green and orange. Here's a green and yellow as well. And here's another green and orange. So let's go ahead and skew this into here, move this in. So we're good. Let's find the green and orange wedge which is right here, and we'll go turn, turn. Well, I guess don't have to do the whole thing, boom. Okay, so what goes on this side? Is it green and yellow? Well, uh, I'm gonna say yes, because if this is red, this is gonna be white, this is gonna be blue, which means um, this is gonna be green and this is gonna be yellow. Uh, if you didn't know the color scheme, you wouldn't know to do that, and you'd end up with a parity situation that is otherwise easily fixed. Anyway, let's bump this out of the way, let's move this in, and then we bump this back. Now let's find the yellow wedge, green and yellow wedge, right over here, so I'm just going to move this around until we get to where we want. Up, up, down, down, so that's in here. And now, here's this. Blast this, whoop, put this out of the way. Move this up, bring this down. All right, so, so far, not too bad. Move this up, turn, 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 turn. Now, this is only going fast because I recognize the shape. So, we've got this all in. Now, we have a choice. What I could do is I could put the rest of this in. In other words, I could, um, or, you know, I'll just continue doing the reductive process. So I'm going to go uh, to the middle here, look for the white and red. White and red is right over here, so I'm just going to skew this. Well, let's, let's find the other white and red first, so we can put it in. Other white and red is here, so I'm going to move this up like so. Move this across here, bring this in, and simply bring this down. Okay, find the wedge, which is right here. Now let's move this up here, put this in, down, down, up, up, and then move this down so this is all reduced. Red and yellow, right here, find the other one right here, boom. Where is the wedge? 
red and yellow right here. So turn, 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 turn. Here's my red and yellow. Bang. Now that's it. Yellow and orange. Yellow and orange. There's one right here. The other is here. Let's move this into here. Turn this over here. Fine. Uh, this is the wedge over here. Down, down, up, up. Turn it in. Okay. So, so far the reductive process is not too difficult. I'm just doing the middle layer. Okay, I'm doing orange and white. Orange and white. The other one is right, is right here. So just go splat. That's in. Move this in. Down, down, up, up. And move this back in. Boom. Okay, now this is it. So the middle layer is done. This is where I make it a little more complicated. Now i got to move all these guys in. Uh, so let's work on all these. So where's the blue? Blue and white is over here. So why don't I... Okay, you got to be careful because this moves here. Okay, this is where it's going to get a little more challenging. Um, or not. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move this here. Okay, now i got to strategize a little bit. Okay, basically I'm going to move this here. Okay, I'm going to bump this out of the way without causing trouble here. Move this down. Move this back up. And bring this back to get this back over here. Now I have this in. Okay. And just so I don't confuse myself, let's go down, down, up, up. Okay, this is reduced. Now let's finish the reduction here. This needs to join here, and then with, uh, which will bump this out of the way, which needs to join here. Okay, so what if I did this? What if I brought this down here, so I reduce this, and I'm going to replace it with this, so I'm simply going to move this in, bump this back up, and then move this back. And that places all these in. Now I just put these wedges in. Oops. Down, down, up, up. Now all these edges are reduced, and we're good. Okay, so it's really just a matter of positioning. Once we have in this position, we can sort of pick up with what the Rex solve is going to be like. And once you get it into this position and you put all your... Not in the ocean, please. If you put all your edges in position, one is going to be where it needs to be, one is going to be rotated correctly but not where it needs to be, two are going to be rotated wrong. So take the two that are rotated wrong on that side and just go down, down, up, up, and you'll find yourself with all the edges done. In terms of the rest of the solve, I do it partially like a face-turning octahedron and partially like a Rex cube. Um, we got to make sure that the centers are all correct, so this is good, this is good. I'll just move, um, say, the orange one in, up, up, down, down, so good. Oh, should not have done it like that. Let's move the white one in. Up, up, down, down. Okay, so these are in, and these are these can be exchanged. Okay, so that just tells me there's no parity. The positioning was right, but I kind of cheated because I know the positioning of these puzzles. So now it's just a matter of moving these guys in, and I can do that algorithm, which is pretty simple. But to those who, who want to get a Rex cube strategy out of this, um, what I would do is I would first uh, find two that are across from each other without the center. If I can't find it, then I'll see which ones I can easily place. So I'm going to move this here so these reds are across from each other. Then I'm going to go up, up, down, down. Move it back. So these are placed, and I'm going to assemble an entire red slice over here. So I'm going to take this. Uh, this is going to this can move into this position to line up with whatever is here. I want it to be red, so I'm going to move this in. Turn, 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 turn. Move this up. Turn, 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 turn. And move this back. Okay, now that I, I've got these over here, um, if I move this over here, it'll line up with whatever color is there. I'd like it to be this, so I'm going to go down, down, up, up. So I'm going to make this turn here to align all of these. Get it out of the way. Down, 
in the back. So now I can cleanly slide this into here. Up, up, down, down. And you can see this whole side is solved. I'm going to follow suit. I'd like to get one of these sides. So, uh, see here's a yellow. I don't particularly like the fact that I don't want to put this whole slice in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this out. Up, up, down, down. So now I have these two, kind of a broken slice. Let's move that up. Up, down, down. So that's good. Now I'm going to move my centers into these positions. Move this here. Up, up, down, down. I kind of want to get it out of here. I'm not ready to be done with that yet. So let's get that out. And now I want to move this into here. I, I need this upside down. So I'm going to go up, up, down, down. I'm going to do something. Oh, actually, at some point, I what I do? Oh. oh, there we go. Not sure how that happened, but it worked out for the best. Anyway, so move this in here to create this whole slice. Up, up, down, down. Simply move this back. I've got this whole thing ready. So let's move this into position to come into here. Up, up, down, down. And just like that, you've got this. Uh, let's go ahead and if we can get the blue one. Do we have two blues together? Uh, we can if I move these two. So I'd like to move this into here. So, well, not yet. I want to move this here. So when I move this back, this isn't destroyed, but this one is. So up, up, down, down. I took this one out temporarily just so I can move this back. Now I'll move this back here. Up, up, down, down. No harm, no foul. And now we're going to move this guy into here. I don't want this one to exchange with it. I don't want this one to exchange with it. I don't care about this one at all. So up, up, down, down. And we move this back here. Okay, let's assemble this. This is already here. If I move this to here, this, if I can move this into here, it will assemble with it just nicely. So um, I'm going to exchange it with this. Up, up, down, down. Move this back here. Okay, move this here. I'm going to put this in this position when I move it back. Up, up, down, down. Not the one I want here yet, so up, up, down, down. We're not even doing this one yet, so this comes up to here. And let's move this red one back in before anybody gets hurt. And now this will move up to here, and next thing you know, I've got the third side done. Okay, so what I can do is start to do a similar kind of a strategy here. But mostly what I've been doing is, let's just get the centers in, and I'm going to switch strategies to face turning octahedron, doing my, al my algorithm. It shouldn't take too long because I only have a couple to go. But let's see what we, we can coordinate. This can go here, this will go here, this will go here. So at least it'll put this one in. Um, but wouldn't it be nice if I can put a green one in that isn't in yet? So what if I turn this to here, move this up? This will go here, this will go here, this will go here. I just got to remember to move this down and turn this back. So we're going to go down, 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 up, and up, down, up, up. We had to remember to move this back. Oop, move this back. Uh, yeah, what did I do? I think, I think maybe this turned here. Yeah. And this turned here. Okay, it seemed to work. So now, just like that, because of that one strategy, I'm down to two. So let's see. If I move this to here, this will go here, this will go here, this will go here, and, and it'll be done. So down, 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 up, and up, down, up, up. And this turns, and boom, done. Okay, so I would say that this other move here in some ways increase the complexity just because I had to reduce these, which took me no time at all. But because I can do this turn, I didn't have to do a lot of these turns to position things for my algorithm. I could just do this. So in many ways, it did simplify the solve. So, um, well, I now have a face-turning octahedral cross cube, which is um, something I would have wanted. Now I wonder if we can get a circle cube out of this where you move this and this becomes stationary. 
All right, so the question now is, can I translate what I just did to this? Skewing my perspective and doing extra algorithms to get things in and dealing with the center and wondering what to do about these extra pieces. So that is gonna be my next phase.